So over the next several years, um, I went along with it and I thought things were going to be different. Um, at the end of 2004, I got burned out doing the teen stuff. So the only other spot for me to go since I was unmarried was the singles ministry. And the singles ministry is basically, uh, the spiritual, I don't really like to use this term, but it's the best thing I can think of. It's kind of like the spiritual junkyard of the church. Because in their mind, to be successful, you, you know, you're a campus student, and then you meet someone in campus, you get married, you go right to the marrieds, and then you have kids, blah, blah, blah. If you're single, you're seen as something is wrong with you. Um, of course, in the ICOC, dating is still very strictly controlled. I know there was a couple here that we, my wife and I met, and they were basically trying to control, you know, when they, they wanted to get married, their disciple, their couple, there was a disciple who said, no, you're supposed to fix all this other stuff first before you get married. And they were like, no, and they left the church and got married anyway. They're doing well now. Um, basically, they tell you for the dating thing, and that's another one's one of the big carrots why they attract so many college students and youth, especially maybe even these days where back in, my day, 20, well, our day, 20 years ago, you know, the hookup culture was there, but it, things weren't as broken as they are now in some ways. Um, where, yeah, we had kind of an idea of, okay, you date around and then if you like them, um, then you get married. Where today in the hookup culture is kind of like, we don't know how to get there. So at least some of the millennials I've talked to, um, which is pretty sad. But anyway, that's one of the things that really attracted a lot of people to ICOC. It's like, oh, yeah, the church will help you date and find a mate. Obviously, in my case, it did not work until a couple of years ago when I got reconnected with my wife, my now wife. Um, but basically, they would tell you that you have to go on dates every weekend. You have to go on dates with people you weren't even interested in. Not just not physically attracted to, but just kind of personality-wise, you two wouldn't really get along. But you have so much in common. You have Jesus in common. Yeah, you have Jesus in common, but you can't have a normal conversation with them. and It's not going to go very far. Um, bless you, my sister. So I did that. I tried to I tried to date. There were some women I was interested in, but it never nothing really worked out because the leadership thought I wasn't ready to take on that responsibility date and take on that responsibility, quote unquote. So I was in the singles my last two years in the ICOC and it was the spiritual uh, junkyard. There were people there who were just broke, stuck, um, people just spinning their wheels. Um, it was really sad. And again, I wanted help, but there's nothing I could do because the leadership wanted to keep everybody in that position, basically. The position was like, let's go out and evangelize, let's go out and baptize people, let's go blah, blah, blah. But it's like, hey, we can't take care of the people we have now. Um, so 4th of July in 2006, my disciple and I went to a bookstore. Remember bookstores? Remember Borders? <laughs> Remember those? Barnes & Noble? Yeah, I think it was a Borders, actually. Remember those? So um, we ran into a former member, and we were just talking about random things, and we started to share with him kind of our concerns about, yeah, things are kind of, I know you left when things went haywire 2003, and it doesn't seem like things were changing that much here in 2006. Um, he basically reassured both of us, and he gave us permission to think, to think <laughs> and that we were not going to go to hell. That opened the doors. I started reading. Um, I started actually paying attention to sermons, and sermons are complete garbage. <laughs> Yeah, um, you would have to pay me to listen these days because it's take something from uh, like uh, Alistair Begg or John MacArthur and flip it on its end. It's, it's just, or something you would do. Yeah, it would be really, really bad. It would be horrible. It's, it's, I said Jesus all over the place, and it's just horrible, horrible. Yeah. 